Talking about multiverse has become mainstream. Many physicists seem to agree that there is more than one universe, but they don't have a common definition or a common vision of what this multiverse might look like. More importantly, there is not a travel guide about how to move from one universe to the other, if there is such a possibility. For Michio Kaku, this transfer can be accomplished through wormholes. He talks about this possibility in his latest book, The God Equation. Dr. Michio Kaku has been at several virtual events where he talks about this book. One of these events was the Gatorsburg Book Festival, where he presented on live stream. We selected and illustrated a segment where he talks about multiverse and the possible way to move from one universe to the other. Wormholes could be the passages to other universes, Kaku says. But until humans cannot replicate the speed existing in a wormhole, we cannot experience living in a multi-universe. Here is a summary from the recent presentation. What happens when you go through a black hole? Is there a white hole on the other end of a black hole? Well, in 1935, Albert Einstein and his student Nathan Rosen devises the Einstein-Rosen bridge shown here. It connects two universes together with a bridge, the Einstein-Rosen bridge, connecting our universe to another universe. And perhaps that other universe is in a different time, in which case this would become a time machine. So think about it. Physicists are now meeting the world of science fiction. Now, you've seen this before. Where have you seen this before in a children's book? Well, years ago, there was an Oxford mathematician by the name of Charles Dyson. He knew about wormholes. Mathematicians call them multiply connected spaces. They don't call them wormholes. The, the press calls them wormholes. However, Charles Dyson decided to write a book about them, and he could not use his name, of course. He was a distinguished professor of math. So he wrote under a pseudonym, Lewis Carroll, and he called it Through the Looking Glass. The looking glass is the wormhole, a gateway between our universe and a parallel universe. So we're talking about a multiverse of universes now. It was Einstein who said that our universe is a bubble of some sort. We live on the skin of the bubble. The bubble's expanding. That's called the Big Bang Theory. But string theory says there could be other universes out there. And when these universes collide, or fission, that's called the Big Bang. So the Big Bang could be a collision of the multiverse, a multiverse of universes. Now, I find this aesthetically pleasing because, you see, my parents, my parents were Buddhists. And in Buddhism, there is no beginning or end. There's just nirvana. But I was raised as a Presbyterian. And in the Presbyterian religion, there is an instant when God said, let there be light. There was a genesis. So either the universe had a beginning or it didn't. There's no two ways around it until now. Now we can meld these two ideas together. Because you see, our universe had a beginning. Our universe had a big bang. Our universe had a genesis. But there are other universes out there. And what are they floating in? Nirvana, a higher dimension. Nirvana is the true arena of all these universes. Now we think of space being three-dimensional, X, Y, and Z, three dimensions. But why three? There's nothing special about three. You talk to a mathematician and they'll say that three is actually quite ordinary, rather boring dimension. Other dimensions are much more interesting. And maybe, just maybe, we can have people living in these other dimensions. This was Edwin Abbott, a novelist who wrote about Flatland, a world on a tabletop, two-dimensional people on a tabletop. Flatland was the first novel to popularize the concept of hyperspace. In Flatland, people live in a two-dimensional world. The lowest level residents are lions. 
Above them are the squares. At the highest level are circles, but anyone who talks of the mysterious third dimension is considered a crackpot. Well, when I was a child, I used to go to the Japanese tea garden in San Francisco, and I would see the fish, the carp, swimming in two dimensions. They could swim forward, backward, left, right, but up and down were forbidden. The universe was flat. The universe was two-dimensional. There is no third dimension. Any fish talking about a third dimension would be laughed at, considered a crackpot, a mystic, an idiot. There is no third dimension. Well, today, many physicists believe, though we cannot yet prove, that we are the fish. We spend all our time in three dimensions, not realizing there could be four, five, six, up to 11 dimensions. The 11th dimension is a key concept of the string theory developed by Dr. Kaku. In the string theory, the multiverse is made of different dimensions, but the highest is the 11th dimension. Beyond 11, the universe will become unstable, and dimensions higher than 11 will collapse back to an 11 dimensional universe. This is a hypercube, a four dimensional cube. Artists and physicists have been fascinated by these higher dimensional objects, led by Salvador Dali. Salvador Dali, many of his paintings are based on the fourth dimension. This is Hypercubica's crucifixion, Jesus Christ crucified in the fourth dimension. Crucified on a tesseract, shown here, a tesseract is a four-dimensional cube. And of course, Salvador Dali immortalized the image of melted clocks. Why melted clocks? Because he was trying to visualize time, time as the fourth dimension. And of course, time could be a fourth dimension, but believe it or not, Einstein's equations do allow for time travel. Einstein himself realized that. Now, Newton, of course, thought that time was like an arrow. Once you fired the arrow, the arrow never deviated. Forward, backward are two distinct realms of time. Einstein comes along and says, not so fast. Not so fast. Time is a river, a river that can speed up and slow down as it meanders throughout the universe. Time is a river. The new wrinkle on all this is that the river of time can have whirlpools. The river of time can fork, fork into two rivers, giving us the possibility of time travel. Now, Stephen Hawking, the great physicist, looked into this question, and he concluded that wormholes through space are allowed under Einstein's equations. He had doubts about going through time, but space, yes, he believed that wormholes could, in fact, go through the fabric of uh, uh, space. So the question is, is time travel possible? Well, there's a wrinkle in all this. The equations say, perhaps, but to do it, you need a black hole, the energy of a black hole. That's what it takes to rip the fabric of space and time, to turn time into a pretzel. It takes energy beyond comprehension.